Edinburgh. Can you all hear me okay? I don't want to use the mic. Okay, so I'll just quickly run through the situation in Edinburgh where we are at the moment. Um, since 2008, you've had 300 plans submitted, um, 48 were submitted last year, and um, we've started dealing with major developments in separate teams really since 2003 when we had a, ma a major development team set up for um, the waterfront. In 2008, we had a second major team to deal with uh, applications in central Edinburgh, and following our restructuring last year, four major teams have been set up. So we're quite well um, resourced there. Um, we have a possibly different process from other people um, in terms of um, what we have. We've got a community engagement technician to deal with the plan process. We have a planning concordat. We have consultee meetings. And we report, to, we report at the plan stage to the planning committee. So I'll go through each of these in turn. Um, we have a community engagement technician um, she registers the plans when they're submitted. She will maintain a register of community bodies and she advises developers of organisations to consult and she'll, she'll help with suggesting, suggesting um, suitable venues and formats for public consultation. She then approves the plan applications. So to deal now with the, um, the Concordat, we originally had a concordat in 2009 and that was only between the council and the development industry and it really sets out what, um, you know, what we expect everyone to do. It was expanded in 2013 when um, community council became involved um, as well so that it's now sort of tripartite agreement and we're actually going through a review at the moment. So, the role of, the, of each of the three parties is set out in the Concordat. So the role of the council is to sustain development by implementing their deed processors with developers and community councils. The development industry have to agree to the process that we are going through um, and um, in particular is to fully engage with local communities. The community council is, um, we're, we're hoping that they proactively engage with the develop, uh, development proposals and work with the council and the developer to, to try to get a consensus for, um, for their, their areas. Um, with the Concordat, we're trying to get developers and um, the communities to sign up. Not all community councils signed up to the, the process. So our pre-application process for major applications is that we aim to have an initial meeting with the team manager and the developer. They will then be advised of the Concordat um, and the need for process agreements, etc. We'll identify a case officer and we'll undertake screening opinion for EIAs and we'll go through this with the background sort of history if you like. Um, we'll then have a consultee meeting once the plan is submitted. Um, at the meeting we'll have the developer, we'll have um, all of our internal consultees and some, sometimes external consultees as well. The developer outlines what the proposals are and then the consultees can then set out their requirements in terms of information that they will need to assess <coughs> in the subsequent planning application. So we'll cover areas such as transport, affordable housing, education, archaeology, landscape and design principles etc. At the end of that meeting, um, we should have a list of all of the information that should be submitted with the application and we <coughs> also ask the consultees to give us some sort of indication of how long it will take them to assess the, um, the information once it's submitted with the application. And these dates can then be fed into the process agreement. The, we, report the, we report our plans to the planning committee at as early a stage as possible in the process. The purpose is to inform the Development Management Subcommittee of forthcoming developments, but it's not an opportunity for them to assess the proposals in any way. So we'll say, for example, that a site is in the Green Belt, but we won't say it's contrary to the Green Belt and um, assess it <coughs> any more than that. Um, it means that committee know 
some questions that it, it gives them some, some background to, to help them with um, their questions <coughs> if they're asked any questions, at least they're not in the dark with it. Um, but it also gives them an opportunity to raise issues with um, the planning officer about maybe perhaps some local issues that they're aware of but um, the planning officer may not be. So that can be included in the assessment of the application when it comes in. We also have the Edinburgh Urban Design Panel um, and that's made up with representations of architectural and landscape bodies, ANDS and Historic Environment Scotland. Again, the developer will, um, will, will outline their proposals and um, they give some assessment of, um, you know, of their views. So the, the panel will come, to, will come to a view and that's reported back to the developers um, it will be public once the application is submitted, but it's a sensitive document until then. In cases where we don't have pre-application discussions, it's not a particular um, issue in, in Edinburgh, because obviously we go through the PAN process, but um, where, we have had, where we have had an issue has been with, um, with Greenbelt applications and the, the team that, um, that, I, that, that I'm in, um, we've had applicated, we've, at the moment our um, local development plans in its final stages, we're waiting for, um, <coughs> for the, the final report um, and in the meantime a lot of developers were putting applications in for Greenbelt applications, um, whether or not they were um, allocated sites in the, the LDP. So we agreed a, um, we agreed a position where if a site wasn't identified in the LDP, was allocated, we would offer one pre-application discussion only, so a meeting only. Um, however, we've lost so many appeals that um, we've changed our process fairly recently to have more than, um, than the one pre-application um, pre discussion, really so that we can get um, some understand, some agreement on some of the fundamental uh, issues in the application. There will obviously be a policy um, objection, but when it goes to appeal, as they all seem to, to do, and um, we seem to be losing all of our green belt appeals at the moment, um, so at least we can agree on some common ground and we're not left with something that we've not discussed at all. So future considerations. Um, the big one is pre-application charging. And obviously for the process I've outlined before, um, it's a huge amount of resource that goes into, um, it goes into the, the pre-application stage. We went through a major exercise in Edinburgh where we looked into to charging. We'd even got to the stage of working out how much we could charge, but our legal um, colleagues in legal services um, didn't agree with this, said we were ultra beauties and um, basically we're not allowed to, uh, to do this until legislation changes. Um, so I'll be quite interested to hear, interested to hear of um, any authority to actually charge for pre-application discussions. And then the next one is whether to use the place standard and how the, place, the new place standard can be incorporated into um, pre-application discussions and length of time, uh, time scales of, of that just to bring the community more into um, our process and give them another, another opportunity to to contribute, but that's a fairly early stage, so um, we're still working on that. So that's be finished. Questions? Ask questions later.